everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Dr. Jeff Sanders from the Embry-Riddle PS Department, Physical Sciences. I'm a professor of physics and a certified flight instructor. And today's topic is the physics of a simulated engine failure, also known as emergency approach to landing, which is one of the curricular topics in the Riddle Part 141-142. So what happens here is you're flying your Cessna 172 Sierra model toward the south maybe to the south practice area at some speed, you're at 3,000 feet, boom, you have an engine failure. Or your IP simulates an engine failure by pulling your throttle to idle. So we wanna calculate some physics. The energy of the total situation is very key. Man energy management is the key that uh, flight instructors use. So we're gonna be at some height to H, typically 3,000 feet is what ATC always gives us, going to the south of the north practice area. Here's the ground, we're going at some speed. You cruise at 100 knots, give or take, maybe 110 knots, we'll say 100 knots for today. And what I wanna do in this first video clip is calculate just the kinetic energy of the situation. In the second clip, we'll do the potential energy and the total energy. And then the big picture is the student or the pilot during a real engine failure is gonna to wanna to manage that energy, land as slow as possible. And a few mistakes that people make that we're gonna discuss and calculate the physics, they're too fast because they're afraid of stalling and they tend to be high and fast when they go for the field or they get too slow and as they bank to turn final for their field, your stall speed increases with bank angle and they stall and they die or they make the field fine but because they were too high and too fast, they end up with too much kinetic energy and they end up having an accident at the end of the field when they hit the oak trees or the barn and so I'm going to compare impulse and momentum if they properly get like a wheat field or a corn field or something. So our first goal here is to get the kinetic energy. Our kinetic energy, as you recall from Physics 103, is one half mass velocity squared. It's energy of motion. So that helps you remember it depends on velocity here. So the first thing I'd like to do is get the mass of this airplane, our mass, M. So from our mass, we're going to get that from our weight. Every Riddle private pilot candidate knows that the max gross takeoff weight of a Cessna 172 is 2550 pounds. 2550 pounds max gross takeoff weight. They're not allowed to take off greater than that weight. So let's use that for this example. And we have a conversion that there's 2.2 pounds per one kilogram. In physics class, we learned how to do these conversions, making sure the units cancel. And this turns out to be 1159.1 kilograms. Okay, good, that's the mass. Now we need the velocity so we can get the total energy of this aircraft. Our velocity is with 100 knots. So our velocity is 100 knots. Or you can write it out K-N-O-T-S, which comes from the history of nautical uh, sailors where they actually threw a rope out with knots in it and counted them and used a stopwatch or an hourglass or something. For us, this means 100 nautical miles per hour. So remind yourself that knots means nautical miles per hour, just like feet per second, meters per second. It's got to be some distance per time. So we want to convert this now into the units for physics class and make this into meters per second. Remember, our goal here is to get the total kinetic energy for step one. So we all know that a nautical mile is uh, slightly longer than a statute mile, a regular mile that we're used, used to. And the conversion is 100 knots is 115 miles an hour. So one nautical mile is 1.15 statute miles. Nautical miles cancel. We all know that one statute mile is 5,280 feet. Statute miles cancel. And remember, our goal is to get to meters per second. You might know of a quicker conversion. The one I know in my head is one foot is 12 inches. And from chemistry class, I know one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Our inches cancel, our feet cancel. We're getting close, we now need meters. So 100 centimeters is one meter. Centimeters cancel. And one more step, one hour is 3,600 seconds. Why? Because there's 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. You crunch all these numbers, multiply everything on top, divide by everything on the bottom, and you end up getting Velocity is 51.4 meters per second. So now we're good to go. We can calculate our total energy. We have a tremendous amount of energy at 3,000 feet and a fast 100 knots. 
your flight instructor is always teaching you to dissipate that energy. Energy management, control it so you don't get too slow too early. But once you've made the field and you're over your landing spot, you get as slow as possible without stalling. So we need to manage all this energy. So that's the first question. How much energy do we have now at 100 knots and 3,000 feet? So the first step is just the kinetic energy. MV squared, we plug in our mass, 1159.1 kilograms. Whoops, one half. One half is in front of the parentheses times this 51.4 meter per second quantity squared. Everyone pause your video and crunch that in your calculator now. And I will write the number down, which turns out to be 1.53 times 10 to the sixth joules. Some very large amount, 10 to the sixth is a million. And in physics class, we like to be cool and call this 1.5 megajoules of energy. All right, next video clip, we'll do the potential energy and the total energy.